Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Skadoosh, you have a new bag of miniatures, sir. I bought you a present, John. Oh, which mean you bought me a present? Yeah, because you love a ramen, isn't it? I, yeah, I do think about them quite often. So you, yeah. you often, we are often find ourselves thinking about the Roman Empire. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Vitrix, what is that? This is new. New, new. Vitrix. I mean, new, new months. Not, not, not new days, but new. You know, still new. Maybe six weeks, something like that. Maybe okay. a little bit longer. Definitely new to us. Anyway, so the Roman ballista, this one here, and I gave you, I gave you one bag, didn't I, for you to make one. Uh, you did give me a sprue, We've got one yes. here, we're going to show you, show you that later, but let's just see what you get in the bag. Seems to be an awful lot of early the, imperial, what do they call them? Oh yeah, you do you want to... What do they call Early imperial Roman bolt shooters, mate. Bolters, yes. Mark 1. Bolters, Mark 1. So you get four sprues. There's one for you. Yep. I know you've seen one of these earlier. Still. Always the thing with Vitrix is the bags are, are, are quite expensive usually because you get a lot in them. And th this this doesn't disappoint in that respect because you get four bolt shooters. Four whole bolt shooters. And a lot of people might only want the one. Plenty of crew as well. Yeah, but you can plenty, plenty you can sell on the other ones or pass some on to a friend. Absolutely. So um, you've built one of these. I did. Should we start by having a look at the sprue? We'll show you the completed model and we'll compare it to some other stuff. Because the sprue, the sprue doesn't disappoint. This is not just the bolt shooter and two like half naked guys, is it? No, you get four options for the crew. Loads of gubbins and bits and bobs. Um, you even get some fortifications or whatever. Not fortifications. What are they called those little doofers? You get some sundry. Oh, to put you get some around. like uh, crucify, cruciform, like barrier type. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Things, yeah. So if you want to put it, we're on going the to base, take some pictures beautiful. from their website and kind of show you the the different things because the the crew. There's four bodies for the crew, but there's there's loads of other tools. These are going to make lots of like sappers and sentries. And actually, if you're playing a skirmish game set in this period where you don't want sort of serried ranks, mm, you just have some these days. are really nice models because the artillery crew in the Roman army are the soldiers. Because these things are issued at quite a low level, like these little battlefield the ballistas. Yeah, cohort or even down at sort of manipular level, century level. So you can make loads of that sort of interestingly posed guys, as I say, like sentries. A nice range of heads, helmeted and otherwise. You obviously get your bolt shooter and then you get the tools on there. Get a barrel as well, mate. Don't forget the barrel. You do get a barrel. You get a, guy, you get a couple of buckets that you can have a guy carrying. Mm. I, like, I like a guy with a bucket. <laughs> Just doing his I thing. Like a man doing his like disappointingly drudgerous work. Not just one bucket, two. You can have even a in the Roman bucket. army, you, somebody's got to carry buckets around. True fact. So how did it? How did it build? How did it build? Yeah, because you built it. I did build it. What did you think? Very easy kit. Very easy. I kit. say very easy kit. If you follow the basic instructions on there, yeah, it's it's just four pieces. One, two, three, four, five standard pieces. A couple of little bits. However, you do get the usual back of the bit of card instructions for building the dudes. Yes. But fortunately, they do actually provide the kind of IKEA type instructions. For the main for the main thing itself. Right, yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, it was probably easier than the guys, wasn't it? I mean it was pretty clear oh, where yeah. everything was going to go. On that. Yeah. You need you need this bit for the You need this bit because not every arm dudes. goes on everybody. No. And some of the models, if you're not built Victrix before, they have a set of arms that are cut at the shoulder and a set other set of arms that are cut at the elbow mm. to fit with different models. So you can't quite pose everything with everything. But I was I was really impressed with those. Still fun. So, this ball thrower then. Yes, this is a tiny one, right? In the grand scheme. This thing. is a small one. So ball throwers in the Roman army. You watch a movie, there's gonna be a lot of artillery in there. Yeah. Every battle, in every movie, <laughs> yeah, it, medieval battles, yeah. they have tre in. trebuchets in battlefields where they just met each other this, this day. Yeah. Magic. You know, stuff like, where did that come from? Now, they definitely had a lot of these, and they definitely used a lot of them. Realistically, because they, they come in different sizes. The Romans had manuals for everything, there was a way to do it, hmm. and almost certainly these things are in kit form. 
Ikea kits. Not for the this bigger ones. Started. The bigger ones they maybe build on site and maybe they have the metal parts that they will right. need yep, yep. for siege works. But these smaller ones that you might see in the battle can be carried too. They're like cohort level. And they can they usually got wheels on them as well. They can push them around a little bit. Mm. But they can be assembled on the day. And when you think about ancient battles, the amount of labour that an army has in it is is a, is a little bit surprising. I know kind of Napoleonic and First War and stuff, these armies are much bigger, but they're also much more dispersed. In this period, you have tens of thousands of men in one camp. Boom. All the time. And they put these guys to it. So the Roman army builds a new camp every day, including digging a four-foot ditch Which on the way crazy. around. Which is crazy. There's hours of labour going to that. So the idea of spending two or three hours as part of your preparation for battle and often when you read the stories of the campaigns the two rival armies are camped within sight of one another for some time sometimes for months <laughs> because your camp is going to be quite well fortified and if you don't fancy your odds today you don't come out sit and wait yeah yeah, yeah. good you know different commanders more aggressive less aggressive gather intelligence do a bit of skirmishing try and learn about them Maybe do a little bit of raiding. These things can go on for months. These guys are a couple of miles apart from one another. So the idea that the day we decide to fight, we're going to wheel out the carts with these things in because we know exactly where we're going to put them. Sweet. You know, and that's not to say the things like meeting engagements don't happen, but they're really quite rare. Normally people will be in camp close to one another and then one day they both decide that they're willing to fight. <laughs> fight! So... It's an interesting ballista, and it's an interesting kit in terms of period, because it, what does it call it? An early imperial. It does say early imperial Roman, yeah. And that's a what little. What does that mean? Mm, what does that mean? What that tends to mean is from Caesar to maybe fifty, a hundred AD. So spanning a period of from fifty AD ish. To a hundred, to a hundred, hundred and fifty eighty. The 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 middle and later Roman empires are really quite different, mm. and the Republic is quite different. So that kind of sets it in the time period of most of the things you've ever heard about in Rome. That little sweet spot. That sweet spot era. between the kind of Julius Caesar's campaigns in Gaul, Pompey's campaigns in the East. There, they've happened just before Caesar. So the, ma the massive battles, Crassus losing to the Parthians, that happens at the same time. Spartacus is just a little bit before mm. Caesar. Pompey and Crassus are rivals because Pompey took the credit for killing Spartacus, but Crassus did it. Dirty man. It's a dirty trick. <laughs> dirty man. trick. And he that. never forgave him for it. And through the kind of first half dozen empires, the Julio-Claudians, they're called. Cla the Claudian family is a big very established Roman family and they end up being the being conjoined with Julian Julius Caesar's dynasty and they kind of take the name so they're called the Julio Claudians right yeah okay an amalgamation through yeah yeah they're called the Julio Claudians and by the time you get to like 400 AD you have Germans and you have like you know what they would have called barbarians at one point or Roman emperors and they've opened it's up all the gone. gates yeah 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 because the Romans enfranchised citizenship but we're going out like way off topic mm, yeah the, what, it, what that means about this though is it depends how important your history is to you with your figures because these guys they're called early imperials, which will be okay, but they're in the Lor that Lorica segmentality, that strapped armor. Yes. No, I always put that with the later period, but I know nothing, so. And so it's it's late by the bit of Rome that you tend to know about, but it's not late by the Roman Empire officially lasts until 1453 or something with the last, with the Eastern Roman Empire we tend to call by Byzantine. Mm. They didn't call themselves I Eastern. Never knew that. They were Romans. <laughs> I never knew the that. The Byzantines are what we call the Eastern Roman Empire. I thought they were just separate like, dudes. Yeah. And no, no. Because the empire has become so vast, we're well, not way off, aren't we? The empire becomes so big that at different points, emperors split it up in different ways to make it, to make it governable. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the division between the Eastern and Western Roman Empire is fairly early in terms of the span of Imperial Roman history. And, and longevity, and the Eastern Roman Empire is, is a lot more successful in, in terms of surviving uh, and not losing so many wars, <laughs> uh, particularly against people like Attila. So it's an early, it, it, 
Right, so the, what, but what that means in terms of the armour, though, this armour, this armour means you, nobody fought Hannibal wearing this armour. That's a clean hundred years before. Right, quite distinct. So you can't, quite distinct. you can't use this. In your wars against Carthage. Boo. I think 146 BC is the final Punic War, mm. which is just a joke. Hannibal's the second Punic War. His dad or granddad is the first Punic War. So this is after anything like, if you want to fight Carthage, you don't want this stuff, you want chainmail. Or even that early, you know, like the sort of metal plate well, on the chest. Literally a plate, yeah. And things like that. Yeah, yeah. And if they'd made a chainmail model, that's usable right through the period. I wonder why they didn't. Interesting. Because it's iconic. Yeah. That I'm, You see Romans in a movie, it doesn't matter what period it is, they're going to be that. wearing that armour. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. That armour, there's some debate about when it comes in. It's definitely in by like 50 AD. That, 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 that's like, it's all over the place by then. They think it possibly starts to get adopted when Crassus loses in Parthia. Which is in which is in the 50 BC ish, right? But it's certainly not widespread. I don't remember. There might be 43 BC, something like that. But that's contemporary with Caesar. It appears to start coming in then, but it's not. It's not until some while longer before it's like universal. Is chainmail just not in fashion anymore, or uh, probably more time consuming to make. There is that, and therefore expensive. There is also that. Well, you need to remember that a Roman army is, uh, this is a state-sponsored army in the era of citizen armies. So the other big state-sponsored army is Persians. That's why they're so terrifying to the Greeks several hundred years before this, is that that is an army of tens, hundreds of thousands, run by a massive empire. Your Greek city-states, which are the real kind of the precursors to Rome as the masters of the universe, they're a citizen militia. Until Caesar's uncle, Marius, Romans are a citizen militia. You bring your own stuff to battle. Okay. And what Marius has done is he said, we've got all these unemployed people. Why are we sending the wealthy landowning classes to do the fighting? When we've got these unemployed people... For glory, sir! ...kicking around Rome, keeping the place dirty. Why don't we pay them to do the fighting? But then suddenly, hang on, I need 25,000 suits of armour a year. So you need to so, bash so that cost out and consistency. Yeah. That's sort of that's why your Roman army is so standardised. It's just cheaper to mass produce these things. Not Second World War mass produce. They're not. There's not. You know. But yeah. for this, you by know. this standard, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that if you make this type of army, you can sell it to the army, uh, for example. And it's the same reason for the red, like the red of the tunics. Yes. Why? Because the dye is cheap. It's the cheapest colour to dye. Just, just berries and stuff, mate. Who knows? <laughs> Which particular red dye they used, I can't remember, but I know that that was the reason why the, the imperial standardised Roman armies are. Was In the red? earlier period, every legion a different colour. But... Right, and so the other, the other colour you get, it's not white, it's undyed. So just like that cloth... Fabric calico type colour. Simple. So the bolts are itself. There's a few different versions of these, but it's the, so it's the one with the two arms that are that are sprung in the tension, mm. and it's got these like steel pots. Yeah, what's that? So that's got the the ropes under tension in it and the springs, and they're in those to make them they they're sealed so they're waterproof. Oh. It's to stop them rusting and getting getting damaged. Okay, that's good. That's what that's what those metal parts are. So they look quite different. Mm. <laughs> Steampunky. Yeah, they do. It, it's quite interesting. It's very different. So it's nice because you've got the Warlord metal one here. Yes. Yeah. And it's very similar. You can see the torsion that they use yeah. on all the ropes and bits and bobs, yeah. but it hasn't got these... These kind of pepper pot type yeah, pepper pot pieces. ones. Now, quite which I've seen though. both versions of these mm. in, in, in books, and I don't know which of these is more modern than the other. Um, as this Surely one, this one. Surely the new Victrix one. Is is, is a, a newer design in terms of historical... Possibly, because this one's late Republican, isn't it? Yes. Republic, Republic. To go back to this kind of empire, early imperial and stuff. So I talked about the Julio-Claudian dynasty, the mm. first imperial family. Yeah. Julius Caesar is never emperor. 
He is assassinated by all of his mates uh, uh, on the Ides of March so that he doesn't become emperor. They don't want it, mate. His nephew, who takes on his name, I think he's named in as well. So he's Octavius becomes Augustus. Octavian in between being Octavius, Octavian, Augustus. Just to keep it complicated. So he's the first Roman emperor, right? Is he? No. <laughs> well, he is. But? But he's actually... He's actually a consul. He's hey, the whoa. first citizen of Rome. He call, they, they call him the princeps. That he's the premier citizen. But technically... There are still elections for two consuls every year. He's one of them. But there's another guy with whom I've told you before about the Republic shares power to consuls. Now, what he's done is divided all the imperial provinces up. These are the ones with all the legions and the money in. I'll have them. And you can have... And then on the other half of the provinces, which are relatively settled, or, you know, Roman places that don't have legions and don't bring in a lot of money, you guys can share them between you. But he's still notionally working within the Republican system. Right. He doesn't he's call himself an emperor. But he is, for all oh, intents clearly. and purposes. Yeah. He conquered the Roman world. <laughs> By decree. Yeah, yeah. Murdered everybody that was any, any kind of threat to him. Or beat them on the battlefield or whatever. Brutal. So when you use a language like early imperial, and, and you know the history, like, what's that then? Mm. Is that... Is that early AD then, or is that... Well, but what we tend to mean is Julius Caesar and beyond. Um, yeah, recognisably different. So, it was a nice kit. Lovely. Really, really like the models. Because you get four crew with this. And frankly, for a War Games miniature, you don't need more than two guys no. to kind of look, look the part. You're probably using them as markers for damage by removing casualties. But the fact that they've got these extra crew figures, it just make great, like, camp workers or engineers you know sapper type dudes well sentries yeah. you get all the governors like there as you said all of those things that were said before i think it's so good that they did that because i think if you got the you got these and you only got the two guys you'd be like oh that if i don't make that ballista this guy would make a really good do you know what i mean yeah at least you do have some options there so you've got those, those extra guys to use for other things so i think it's a lovely kit and I think that they're making use of the fact that it's multi-part plastic. And that's what I really want to see. You know, as compared to Warhammer's multi-part plastic assembles and monopause miniature now. Yeah. This, you're going to build four radically different guys each time you build this. It's making use of, why is this plastic kit superior to a metal crewman or a Sciocast one? Saying, because I can make him into lots of different things. You can tweak his arms. Relative, yeah. Well, I mean, put they've still got bobs. Yeah, they've still got bits and bobs uh, that is quite specific to the, the bolt thrower. But still, just as you say, engineers, there's plenty of pigs and bits and bobs. Yeah. It's a good kit. Fun. I think it's a good kit. Right, that was our look at the Roman bolt throw, the early imperial Roman bolt shooter. Bing. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.